Final day at Sierra Space 2019. Today we are joined by my friend Chris Cavas. He's a Washington-based journalist, very knowledgeable about naval matters here in the US, and he's gonna point to us a few interesting stuff on the show floor. Chris, good morning. Well, good morning, Xavier. Thanks a lot. I appreciate being here. Let's go inside and take a look. We're here at Bell, the well-known maker of helicopters. Bell is also in the unmanned aerial system business, and they're developing a vertical lift unmanned vehicle called the V-247 for a marine requirement. Here to talk, to tell us about it, is Todd Warden with Bell's unmanned aerial systems uh, division. And so, Todd, can you tell us about this aircraft? So the Bell V-247 Vigilant is a unmanned tilt rotor system. The aircraft was designed for the Marines' capability needs that are stated in their aviation plan going back to 2015. So those capability needs are airborne early warning, electronic warfare, ISR, C4, persistent fires, tactical distribution, uh, among other items that they wanted to cover down on. So what Bell did is Bell looked at what we've been doing in the past, did some trade studies. We had just been involved with the JMRTD developing the V280 Valor tilt rotor system. We want to take the technology that we developed in that aircraft and apply it and see how we could provide solutions to the other services uh, capability needs. So this is a, this is a mechanized model. You, you can run a sequence. Can you start the sequence for us yeah. and let's just see what it does. Go ahead. So what we're seeing right now as the aircraft starts to tilt is that we're seeing that it folds down very similar to a V-22. And the reason why we do this is because the Marines have expressed an interest, it came out in the RFI last spring, that the aircraft should have the same spotting factor as a, as a UH-1Y. It also expressed the need for potentially to be destroyer compatible. And so what that means is that the aircraft has to, has to fold down to a size similar to a 60 Romeo. And what we see here is that the aircraft via a blade fold wing stow folds down to a size that can fit now into a destroyer's hangar. Pretty good stuff. So this, this is a 1-8 scale model. You haven't, will you build a prototype? So as I mentioned earlier, we have the V280 Valor that's flying right now. There's so much technology in the V280 Valor that goes into the V247 that every time the V280 Valor flies, it reduces risk for this technology. Austell USA, based in Mobile, Alabama, is well known for building aluminum warships. They build the LCS-2 class for the U.S. Navy. They build the Expeditionary Fast Frigate for the U.S. Navy. They're also at this show pre pre presenting for the first time two unmanned concepts. And so this is right here, a unmanned catamaran, which is an interesting little craft. This is the, it also, almost all these craft are optionally manned, so yes, people can get in them, drive them, usually for ferry purposes, but they're allowed to, uh, but they're also designed for autonomous operation. This is a, presented as a range of, uh, of, of, of sizes. This hull here, 131 to 361 feet, or 40 to 110 meters long. So it's actually a fairly sizable uh, ship that's gonna be pretty small, it could be pretty big. Depends what the customer wants, the customer being the U.S. Navy. This is the catamaran version. Up above is, uh, there's not a model, but there's a, a, a picture of a trimaran uh, ship. Very interesting uh, ship. That's actually about the same size as the catamaran, uh, but it has, it's, it's, it has different characteristics. It's an interesting ship. Uh, certainly two of the, most, two of the more innovative uh, designs that we've seen at the show this year. Austell also uh, is, is presenting again their uh, frigate variant, their, what, what they're proposing for the U.S. Navy's FFGX uh, frigate program. This model actually was first as displayed in January at Service Naval Association, and Austell uh, was the first ones to really come out with, with uh, publicly with uh, their variant. There's two more this year uh, doing uh, the showing their frigates, uh, Fincantieri and General Dynamics uh, Bath Ironworks. We'll be taking a look at those. Yeah. 
Italian shipbuilder Fincantieri unveiled their proposal for the U.S. Navy's FFGX program here at the Sirius Space Exposition. This is the first time this has been seen. This is a model that uh, has been put together for it. This is based on the Italian version of the Frem frigate. Uh, it's a little bit longer. It's a little bit bigger. It's about 7,400 tons. It's a pretty sizable ship. A uh, very interesting ship, very capable ship. The hull is pretty, is, is, is pretty much uh, the Italian frame. The superstructure obviously is different been, uh, to meet the U.S. Navy requirements with this, with a uh, Spy 6 radar, radar in, embedded uh, in the superstructure. So this ship is uh, very competitive right now. Um, it's it is, it's uh, something that uh, a lot of people think really has a, ha has a shot. Uh, to meet the growing U.S. Navy requirements for the frigate program. Along with Fincantieri, General Dynamics Bath Ironworks, who's partnered with the Spanish firm Navantia, debuted their frigate concept for the U.S. Navy at the Sea Air Space Show. This is an animation of the ship, very impressive ship. This is the first public display of it. Uh, based on the Spanish F-100 Alvaro de Bazan class frigates, uh, which were designed as, and built as Aegis frigates. This is not an Aegis ship, of course. It has the spy, uh, the, the AESA Spy 6 radar on it. But uh, it's, this is based on the Spanish ship, but being Bath Ironworks, who was the planning yard for the DDG-51 Arleigh Burke class destroyers, they've sort of put some elements in here that, that evoke the uh, Burke class. The, it's, it's got the very similar mass, similar rake to it. They've built up the uptakes, the, 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 the funnels or stacks uh, that look a lot more like a Burke class destroyer. This is a big ship. The 62 on it is the, would be the number of the next frigate. Uh, and frankly, this is about the same size as the uh, Frem frigate from um, um, Fincantieri. It's about 7,400 tons. Uh, but this is an impressive ship. Uh, right now, this would look like a, a pretty serious contender for the FIG program. Although in the past, Lockheed Martin has displayed a model of their FFGX frigate proposal for the U.S. Navy, They're, they have not displayed that for over a year now as they've pulled it back for more reworking. What is on display, however, is a nice big model of the Canadian surface combatant. Lockheed has partnered with BAE for this ship. This is based on the Type 26 uh, frigate for the Royal Navy. Uh, Canada has chosen this ship. This is a very impressive warship. Lockheed is proud uh, to be associated with this. Um, they're doing the combat systems on it. And th there's a little bit of politics perhaps in this that, uh, you know, you never know. This is absolutely not confirmed by any means, but you never know if the Navy's per frigate, U.S. Navy frigate program is delayed too much, then uh, this starts to become uh, po a potential contender. One of the requirements for the U.S. Navy's program is that the ship has to be in production. Type 26 is not yet in production, or one of the variants of, but it's getting close to that. This is an impressive ship, it, and, and this has now become a staple of Lockheed's display at, uh, in the U.S. Another interesting item on display by Lockheed at their booth, although they didn't want to talk too much about it, was a hypervelocity missile. Um, this missile is, is being developed uh, by Lockheed for DARPA, the U.S. Uh, Defense, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. Uh, the weapon is, is shown here, being launched from a Lockheed Martin F-35 strike fighter. Uh, but it's a pretty interesting thing. This is, uh, obviously, the U.S. is very interested in, hyper, in developing hypervelocity weapons right now. And that, that, that seems to be a wave of the future. And that's kind of a quick look at some of the more interesting items on display here at Sea Airspace. That's a wrap. Thanks for watching our coverage of CR Space 2019. Make sure to catch us next week. We'll be reporting from Index Asia in Singapore.